and uh, to be re responsible to whatever the Lord was saying for her. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So Hi. it is loading and it will show me in a moment that we are live. And we are live, ladies. So I'm liking, if you will do the same, grab your device and like and share. Again, I'm going to be sharing to my stories, uh, telling them we are live. And I thank you so much. So many of you have been doing just that and it's so appreciated. Uh, likewise to the group IBH Sister Sounds World, if any of you are listening and you are not a part of IBH Sister Sounds World, hey, I need to know why. I need you to come join us. Your voice matters. Come join us. Your but, voice matters. All righty, Anita, you're doing too much. You, you got to get it where it's back on silent. There we go. And I want to share one more because I have to share to our page, um, IBH. Doing too much. Okay, there we go. Yes. Back on silent. There we go. And I want to share one more because I have to share to our page. There we go. And I think I'm good now. Let's get back here. Just bear with us, folks. We're just about ready to go. I want to make sure I've got some people waiting in the waiting room. Let's admit them all. And get back on that page so we can see what's going on. And the meeting is being live streamed. We want to say good morning to each of you. Refreshing morning to each of you. Hey, Jackie. I'm so glad that you're here. And we have um, with us Deidre Thurman. We have, oh my goodness, uh, you're back again, Regina. I'm so happy California is showing up today. I love it. <laughs> Dr. Supriya, thank you for joining us all the way, I believe, from India. You are welcome to be with us, our sister. We are a global community and we're excited. We have Donna Wright in North Carolina, N uh, Lady Navea in California. Jackie is there in the Carolinas and Teresa, guess what? Jackie's in the Carolinas as well. And so we want to thank each of you for joining us at IBH Sister Sounds World. This is our A Day Worthy Challenge, and it's day three. And so many people have been blessed. We've had a lot of attention towards the replay. People are sharing it. We've had people literally say thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for being free enough to share. As I said before, when we have this particular event, all titles go out the window. This is just sisters talking and brothers talking. And we're having uh, an exchange around the theme. Now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? Now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? And I'm gonna go a little bit different today, but I do wanna just have recap with those who have not been with us. Some of our guests have been with us all week long since Sunday and they're hanging with the sister. I love it. <laughs> I am so excited. Um, and uh, I just thank God that each of you are here. Your voice is not just valuable, it is valued. It's not as much when you come to Sister Sounds as what you do, as much as it is, who are you? And that's where we're building. That's that's the type of coaching that I provide because there are loads of people to tell you how to make money. Loads of people to tell you how to accelerate your business, 10X this, that, and a third. And somebody will get in there and they cannot get past your attitude. They can't get past your snarky or you're so super sweet. They don't have time to do that much talking. So in this forum, we like to get down intrinsically because that's what I'm called to do. Someone said, Anita's like a, a fine-tuned scalpel. 
they're right. <laughs> and I'm good at it. But it's not in a way that will hurt you. It's always in a way that will edify you. And I want to touch on that because we have so many givers in the room. So many givers. But right before we get to that, and we want to definitely welcome Pam. Um, hold on one second, guys. Boy, I've got people texting me from UK and everything. They just need to come on, huh? <laughs> and welcome, Bernadette. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All righty. I would like to go around the room, and I want to start with Lady Nevea. And if you will share with us one thing that you remember that stood out to you uh, during the time that you were here, then I would love for Deidre to come and share as well. We'll go back to Callie with uh, Regina. And then also we'll go to Pam. So we'll go from uh, Nevea to Deidre, Regina, then Pam in Zimbabwe. All right, Lady Nevea. Good you. morning. Oh, well, hello, everyone. <laughs> it's morning for me in California. What stood out for me basically was um, the fact that, you know, we all have a purpose and we all have a greatness inside of us. And uh, the fact that all of these ladies uh, just are fulfilling the purpose that the Lord has given them. And that just mean, meant a lot to me because uh, that's what we're here for. The purpose that we have been given and, and on, anointed to do, we're doing. Excellent. Thank you so much. We all have a purpose. And Jason said something so important. He said that when you, I'll paraphrase, when you are being your authentic self, that is your greatest skill. That's your super sauce. That's your money maker. And I'll tell you why it is. Welcome, Hazel. Welcome. I'll tell good you morning, why it is. Anita. I'll tell you, good morning, dear. I'll tell you why it is. It's because the fallacy, this idea that you are one in a million has been the biggest fable in the world. It's kept you from being everything you are destined to be. Not do everything you're destined to be because you are a one and only. And if you know you're a one and only, I need a thumbs up right now. I need to, I need to see that you know you are a one and only. And it's important that you rehearse that nurture. It's important, and what I mean by that is, and we're gonna go into that, is that you want to really engage that thought. You want to meditate, I'm a one and only. And because I'm a one and only, how do I really want to show up? Hmm. So there's no comparison, there's no comparison. All right, Deidre, if you'll share with us that one thing that stood out for you. What stood out for me was the camaraderie. Uh, everybody that was here from all around the world and uh, all of us just getting to know each other meeting each other and learning things about each other that we wouldn't have normally talked wow. about yeah a lot okay. of transparency in this room a lot it's a lot of safety it's a lot of women that are not competing but we're complimenting one another respecting one another's voice i don't have to agree with you all the time but i will respect that you have the right to have your perception and your perspective because it is good it is good all right let's go to cali 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 in san diego with regina good morning everyone good morning good morning Yes, yeah, so um, I'm just grateful for this opportunity, uh, meeting like-minded individuals and um, being able to share uh, what's in the heart and uh, just, I'm, I'm totally blessed by this experience. Um, I've just been taking notes and kind of soaking in everything. So it's great. Thank you, thank you. The transparency, the camaraderie, purpose, all of that is so, so very important. Pamela G, G, why do I change your name all the time? I'm so sorry. Well, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. I've totally enjoyed just being a part of this platform. And what has stood out for me has been the power um, of just being silent. And the fact that um, 
silence cannot be misquoted. That has given me just this little tagline that says, I reserve the right to be silent when I need yes. to be, yeah, to step back and be silent. And I don't have to be forced to respond when I'm not ready to respond. Um, I've just enjoyed just, you know, the nuggets that have been coming out of here. I've been taking a lot of notes myself and just <laughs> saying, Lord, help me, you know, implement each of these lessons that I'm learning. So I'm totally, totally grateful to be a part of this platform. Thank you, Anita. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Let's see someone else that's been with us. Uh, Donna, I know you've been chiming in. We wanna hear from you as well. Yeah, for me, I think the biggest takeaway is all of the conversations we've had. Um, especially um, one thing that stood out to me is the, don't let my drama or trauma, don't internalize that. You know, a lot of times we try to help people and then we take on their problems. And, and a lot of people said, don't do that. You know, you, you want to be helpful, but don't, and don't take on their trauma as well. I think that's yes. a key for everyone. Yes, I will not make your trauma my drama. Yes. <laughs> because then I become traumatized. Yep. And I want to be supportive of you. I can walk with you, but I can't walk for you. I, I support you, but I can't go down with you. Yep. That's respecting not only social space, emotional space, spiritual space, financial space. Do I need to go any further? <laughs> right? <laughs> that we want to allow, the more you allow someone else to be clear about who they are, it clarifies who you are because you give yourself the right to agree, to disagree agreeably. All right. We're going to go there. There. What I want to do first and foremost is I want to introduce our very special sister, and let's give her the queen's way, Sapria. We're gonna, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Yes, yes you are correct, uh, Anita. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me this golden opportunity. And I'm really humbled and gratitude to everyone. Oh, oh we're happy to have you. Uh, Dr. Sapria, um, forgive me, because I didn't get with you uh, to learn to pronounce your last name. But Sapria <laughs> is an international speaker, Toastmaster, NLP life coach, communication expert, and leadership coach, soft skill trainer, global motivational keynote speaker. Shall I go on? Beautiful lady, full and spirited, a master coach in Business Power Academy, Netherlands, also international advisor and host of Macedonian Association Dolza. Oh, you'll have to say the rest for me. Is that Sarika? Shrekza. <laughs> uh, International Macedonia. And I, when we talk and have our, I'm going to start having these wonderful one-to-one -one lunch and learn chats. You know, just invite a sister, say, girl, grab you some lunch. Let's go online. Tell me more about what you're doing. I want to know more about your why. And when I learn more about your why, I can then call Lady Nevea and say, wait a minute, I need to connect you with so-and-so, I need to connect you with Bernadette. I need to connect you with Deidre because they're working on a project. And I think you have some really special tips that you can lend to them. Go ahead and give it to them, girl, because you have no idea what doors that will open for you. At some point, we have to care about each other's success. If you believe that, can you give it the queen's way? You've got to give it the queen's way. <laughs> I love it, I love it. She is a trained professional. The person that we're speaking of is Sapria. Sapria, tell us, tell us in your own words, with all of the training that you offer, with absolutely all of the coaching and NLP that you offer, you happen to be a giver. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to know that. You're a giver. You're pouring out. And sometimes what happens with givers is they get givers remorse and they kind of forget about their why and their what. And they sometimes have to go back and figure it all out again. And they don't feel worthy for some reason. But at the moment that you feel worthy is where we want to come in and have your voice 
influence what we've been hearing to say, now that you know you are worthy again, now that you know you are worthy, how have you well, grown? Well, Anita, first of all, I will say, when we all are here on this beautiful platform, in a way, we all are worthy. And when we are worthy of being a strong woman, then I will say only one thing, a woman endurance, a woman resiliency, and a woman confidence make her a worthy woman. And as far as about me, you have asked, my trainings, my confidence, and my giving attitude says only one thing. Women, thy name is fragility, but we are stronger than the mountains. And the God has given a beautiful quality of resiliency, which we even, we don't know. At the time when we had to face adversities, and that's the time where we know how strong we are. And a worthy woman is having n number of qualities. The main thing is never ever lose your confidence in any situation. Because confidence is not only when you are happy or the situations are favorable. The real confidence is when 100 people say, you can't do, and you say, I can and I will do. That's the real potentiality of a real woman, a worthy woman, and we all have that great quality. Only we have to help each other. Only we have to shine each other rather than competing in a cat-rat race. So let's help each other, let's motivate each other, and that's the worthy quality of every woman who are sitting and who are enjoying and who are watching us live now. That's it what I want to say, Yanita. Thank you so, so much. I heard some key words, ladies. She said the resiliency, and she mentioned confidence, and the giving attitude, that willingness to give of oneself, the nurturer, whether it be emotional, spiritual, whereas intellectual, being able to give and to share. And I've said it every day, I'll say it again. One of the most wonderful places to show up in any of our lives is that place that we have positioned ourselves with joy. When you're full of joy, it's so easy to enter your space. It doesn't mean that everything is going well. It doesn't mean that everything's picture perfect. It absolutely doesn't mean that every need has been met in the moment. But when you have joy, that's a state of being. It's not a feeling. It's there. It's a part of who you are. If you believe that, give me a thumbs up. Come on, give me a thumbs up. I know, right? Right? All right, Miss Bernadette, thank you so much, Sapria. And we will be chiming in and out and sharing as we move forward. But I want to give some of the ladies who haven't been with us just a moment to share. Now that you know you are worthy. Now, I'm going to say this again. We're not using titles. We're not using religious jargon. You can speak your faith towards God. But we know that there's so many people that are going to be listening. They may not understand your cliches and things like that. It's nothing wrong with it. I'm not villainizing it. But we want them to hear your words. Someone called me and they said to me, they said, it's the words of the women that are touching and they're moving, they have movement in it. It's reaching me, it's not just teaching me, it's reaching me, and that's what we're intended to do. Miss Bernadette, with your talented self, <laughs> I'll tell them where you're from, a tiny bit about what you do. You have so many talents, just tell them three of them, because you, you got so many. <laughs> and then, then share, now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? Greetings, 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 everyone. Um, thank you for having me on. Um, again, my name is Bernadette Davis. I am, I live in Mississippi, but originally I'm from Chicago. Um, was there until my junior year of college and we moved to the South. Um, three of the things that I do, one that I absolutely love, of course, is ministry. Um, but the next thing that I do is I design clothes. I have my own clothing line, so I design clothes. And then on top of that, uh, one that's really important to me is that 
I'm a mother. <laughs> so I'm a mother slash grandmother slash wife and all those. So those are my top three. Um, but again, I do a lot of things. Um, now that, oh, it's so much to say. I was sitting over here thinking like, how can I narrow this down? I'm just going to say I'm a better me. I am mm. a better me. I have learned to accept me, to love me, to appreciate me, that if no one around me appreciate me or tells me that they appreciate me or that they're proud of me, I am proud of myself. I wow. am proud of being me. I discovered who I am. I learned my different temperaments. Now I know how to respond to certain situations where it used to irritate me and frustrate me. Now is I breathe. And I breathe and I'm like, you know what? You're responding this way because of your temperament. So what can you do different than you did before so you can get a different result and not be so angry about it? And so because of that, I found peace within me. So being right. able to sit within myself, love myself. We can say we love ourselves, but when you sit down and say, I love every part of me. I love my flaws. I love this because God made me unique. When you said my uniqueness is my sauce, I wrote that down. My <laughs> name on Facebook is Bernadette Uniquely Me. And yeah, I mean every bit of that because I'm unique. When he made me, he broke the mold. And it was for a reason so I can be unique. So I can show you my good side, my, my improving side, but just be mm. me. So I'm loving. I can honestly say this time of my life, I am loving me. I wow. appreciate me. I we accept give you the wave on that one, me. honey. We got to give you the I queen's wave on that one. <laughs> me. Everything about me. And when you learn to love you, it doesn't matter if anybody else does or not. Because you can be content and happy with yourself. So I wow. love you. That is a great space. Thank you so much for sharing. She said, mm -hmm. I'm a better me. I love me. I can show you my, I love this, my improving self. Did you hear that? I can show you the part that's improving and not feel guilty. It doesn't matter whether it measures up to where you're going. I know where I'm going. And then I don't know all of where I'm going, but I'm committed to get there. And I want to map us back. That's a perfect segue. I want to map us back. First thing I'd like you ladies to do is just take a paper and pencil. And I'd like you to write down two of the top values that are important to you. You have values, meaning not being a mom or anything like that. I'll give you an example of a list of values so you understand perception and perspective. And if you don't have the book yet, you should get it, build it beyond, because loads of good stuff in there. <laughs> All righty, here's some values, ladies. Confidence, connection, family, achievement, ambition, authenticity, boldness, credibility. I'm just reading them and something may resonate with you bravery, calm, candor, charity. Do you see what I'm saying? Timeliness, positivity, power. So it's a way of thinking and acting more than something you just do. So I want you to, I want you to write down the top two values. And I want you to use your icons. And when you look at the bottom of your uh, screen, you'll see it says reactions. When you have it there, choose your, your smiley face or whatever that lets me know you've got those two values. And I want you to hold on to those two values. You can do a thumbs up, which would be excellent. Donna's ready. Excellent, excellent. Jackie is ready. Deidre, Supriya, excellent, excellent. Pamela, Hazel, yes, 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 yes. Everybody's almost there. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We have Shauna Mefiele from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much. We welcome you. Amelia, we welcome you as well. Now, I want you to write down all of us have it, 
One area, it could be in your thinking, how you've, how you've thought before, one area where you limited yourself, but you no longer do that. One area where you may have set a limitation for yourself, but you no longer do that. If you'll write that down and then let us know when you're ready. Some while you're writing, I'm just going to read something while you're writing. Um, someone said yesterday, I believe it was Diane, she said, I only understood being effective if I was under the pressure. I only understood if things were moving, if I was in a position that had to be hard, it had to be tough. Some people, they like being five minutes before it's time to get something done and then they're getting it done. You know what I'm saying? They, they like the adrenaline rush. But we, we had a brief conversation that I think is really important. And we talked about being able to receive feedback, being able to give feedback, but mostly tenderizing our ear to hear better. And so sometimes when we're ready, you know, uh, the wounded heart, we're talking with someone who isn't ready. And I was sharing with everyone, I said, you know what? And, and I believe Regina was telling us how to take that pause and wait, stop, step back. I'm not quite ready to have that conversation, allowing people to say, okay, I understand that giving that grace to say that, and all of this is gonna work together, just stay with me. But being able to understand that the healed heart, the heart that's healed does not beat the same as the wounded heart, whatever that looks like. And so when you're ready, it may not mean that the wounded heart is ready for your ready. So that's why I wanted you to find two values and then be able to share with us that one area, you don't have to tell us all, but that one area where you know you used to have that stinking thinking. And now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown in that area? So let's go back and let's start with Regina because she sparked this thing in me yesterday and her transparency was amazing as she was sharing with us, you know, just having alimony life and how uh, she just heard her speaking ability is so natural and that's what makes a, a great speaker is when it's not canned. I can't do the canned stuff. I got to be me, but I have to be me in this way. I'll give you a quick example. When I was in the academy, phenomenal um, teacher that was a guest instructor professor from Harvard. And I was in there writing and just writing all my information down and she was reading it. She kept giving me a C. I was like, what's going on? And she said, I was leaving one day. She said, can I walk with you? And I said, yeah, you, you know, I was salty, right? <laughs> yeah, you, come on. She said, Anita, everything that you've written it could have been an A plus, but you have to speak the language of the academy so that your influence can go broader than your community. Now, if she was here right now, I would give her the queen's wave. <laughs> I would have to, because this is a global platform. And I know you guys are gonna be, ladies are gonna be coming back and you're gonna go, and there's people here who are gonna call you and everything. So I want you to expand by being able to use your language to tell us those two things you know you value, and then share with us that one thing where you had that stinking thinking, but now that you know you're worthy of the big win, how have you grown? All right, Regina. Okay. Um, number one, what I value is uh, my commitment to growth. Wow. I just, I want to grow. I don't want to be stagnant in any way. Um, if that means I have to cry to grow, then I'm going to cry to grow. Then I'm going to get up and grow from there. <laughs> Um, I, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be stuck. I, for so many years, I was stuck in a life that I did not desire and did not know how to move beyond. Once I figured out, uh, what that first step looked like, 
I took two and three and four and five yes. and I stumbled and I fell and I rolled over and I got back up and yes. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I, I, I just, I just, I want to constantly grow no matter what the situation is. Mm. And, yeah, I, I value my commitment to growth. Excellent. Commitment yeah. to growth. Yes. And in what area was a area where you limited yourself, but now you no longer do that? And why? Um, fears. Mm. Fears. I had a lot of fears uh, rooted in my childhood traumas and my early adulthood traumas. And once I peeled back those layers and began to understand how those things were established because I was pre-wired, uh, yes. I then was able to move past my fears because <clears throat> there are two types of fears. There is um, a, a, a fear that is rooted in protection for us that protects- An important us. fear, yes. Right, yes. there's an important fear. Mm -hmm. And then there is a fear that is a hindrance that you can't do that because mm -hmm. something will happen to you. You can't do that because uh, people will think differently of you. You can't do that. Those are hindrances. And so I think it's important to understand when we need to protect ourselves and when we need to move past a fear that is holding us back. And perfect example for me was um, I've never, uh, up until uh, a few weeks ago, I had never traveled internationally alone. And uh, as I, my birthday was approaching last year, I began to think about what I wanted to do for my birthday this year. And I said, I want to travel internationally alone. So to add to the to add to the difficulty, I decided to fly out of an international airport, which then scared everybody in my circle. <laughs> they were just so <laughs> terrified for me. I could just imagine all of them sitting somewhere holding their breath until I could text to say. No, I trust me, I know what you mean. When I went to Zimbabwe, I went by myself and they're like, what? <laughs> Oh my God. But it was just a great joy for me to get to uh, get to the airport and to text them and say, I got to the airport, I'm safe and I'm sound. Um, I, I've landed at my connector city, I'm safe and I'm sound. I've landed at my destination, I'm safe and I'm sound. I'm in the hotel and I'm breathing. I'm, safe, yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm breathing. Now I'm gonna stop talking to you until I get back home. But thank you for your concern and your love for me. But no, it was, it was an incredible journey mentally and physically for me. Yes. And I am looking forward to so many more, so many more. Yes. Thank you so very, very much. Let's go to Supriya, share with us uh, two values. That's powerful, two values. And then in an the area where you were limited and it can even be most recent because we know you're coaching on high levels. So we want something more recent, something juicy and uh, share with us how you've overcome that, not limiting yourself in that area. First of all, my top two values are my own happiness because mm. if you are not happy how can i make others happy whether it is my family whether it is my society whether it is my mentees or coaches a woman has to be happy in her heart first we have been taught from childhood since childhood you have to sacrifice as a mother as a wife as a daughter but in the end, what? What for us? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we will fall into a nightmare. What we are doing for ourselves. So for a woman, whatever you are, whether you are a mother, whatever role you are doing, but if you are not happy in your own heart, yes. then that doesn't require 
you a perfect human being. Right. And making yourself happy doesn't mean you are selfish. It means you are giving 100% to your personality. You are sculpturing your personality. You are imbibing those positive vibes which you can give it to the world. So number one is make your soul happy. Then only you can make this world souls happy. And second yeah. is never ever give up on your dreams. Whatever happens, no matter how many emotional traumas you're going through, how many millions of pieces you are shattered, but you should have the capability to collect all those pieces and make a new version of yourself, whatever yes. happens. Nobody will not support you emotionally. Remember friends, nobody, whether it's your husband, whether it's your friend, family, at last you have to get up. You, at last you have to mut utter and mutter those courages to be a real woman. So never ever give up on your dreams and never let anybody to come in between your dreams. That's decide my two top 10, uh, two uh, values of my life. Yes. Any limitations which has made me, well, one limitation I would love to say, I get still to say no to others. And I have to work on this because sometimes even I teach others, tell friends to say no to others. But sometimes when it comes to me, I get shy. So I have to work on this. When I am not ready, I can say no in a very polite and a very humble manner. So I am doing those things. And let's see whether I'll be successful or not. So I, love I sum up by saying only one thing, keep moving, keep keeping your top values, and then you can decide you a real woman. Exactly. Yes, yes. You are worthy of setting limitations and boundaries. You are worthy to make decisions, not the type of fear that causes you to be enabled to stop, but empowered to keep moving. I love it. I love it. Come on, Deidre, all the way from Vegas. Share with us. Okay. My two words are timeliness and power. Those are mm -hmm. some things that are important to me. You know, you, you read some things off that list. A lot of those things were or are important to me, but those are the two that I chose um, in this time and day in my mm -hmm. life. Yes. Um, timeliness. If you're not timely, you will procrastinate. Procrastination will hold you up in life. It will hold you up in life. It doesn't help you be your better you. Yes. So, timeliness is always important. Power. I walk in power every day. My feminine power, because I'm a woman first before I'm anything else. And also knowing that I want to make an impact in somebody's life. I always say this. I've been saying it for years. If I can just make a difference in one mm. person's life, then I fulfilled my purpose here on earth. If I could just make a difference in one person's life, I'm not talking about just any difference. I'm talking about something very uh, impactful, positive, that it changed something within them. And yes. they did something different and better with their life and they became a better them because of either something I did or something I said. And I'm happy with that. So yes. my two timely timeliness and power wow now what is something that very well may have been a limiting belief that you now no longer have that limiting belief and why i limited life i limited mm. life i did and um there was a lot of things i spoke on um sunday here and one thing that i said i talked about um not expressing the things that I desire to do and to be because of the people that I was around and I didn't feel like they under, they would understand if I talked about it if I shared with them my goals and my dreams and all of that so I kind of just became mute for years and just never did anything with it I never talked about it and I never did anything with it so I it was life so I have absolutely changed that about me, 1,000%.
Wow, that is that is amazing. And I, I appreciate that the whole limiting life. I have to jump in on that one with you because I did the same thing. I, I actually said, I remember where I was and I said, wow, I wish I couldn't see because I had that gift of sight and foresight, insight. Uh, but I could see only the things that were just as a younger person, because I was young. But as I began to grow, I began to silence myself as well. And now, how about no? That's the best way I can say it. <laughs> how about no? It would not do, me, do you well to try to shut me up. It's not going to happen. It'll happen only when I know that I'm in community like this. And there's so much the richness of the value that is in front of me, it quiets my soul. There's no reason. Another way you can get me silent is I don't talk to people that can't hear me. It's a waste of your time. You're not called to speak to everybody. Yeah, that deserves a queen's wave right there. Silence can't be misquoted, but speaking when you're not being heard is a waste of your voice. In my book, there's a chapter called Punch the Pig, and it means take back those pearls that you have freely given away and they didn't want them in the first place. A person that only wants a rock that is made out of sandstone because it's valuable to them, there's nothing wrong with that. Stop villainizing people because they don't want you and you a diamond. Okay. Okay. Y'all gonna wake up? Anybody need coffee? All right. You are a diamond, you are a ruby, you are sandstone. Stop trying to connect with people to hear you when your, your, your mission, your voice, your influence, you are a big fish in a little pond and you're going in a pond where there's a lot of big fish and you're getting eaten alive. Learn how to celebrate who you are, how you are and who responds to what it is you are called to be. I said that intentionally. So not only can silence not be misquoted, but it is the same that you should not speak to people who don't have an interest in what you're saying. Can I get a queen's wave? Come on here. All righty. I love it. Thank you so much. Come on, Miss Jackie. And give us, <laughs> give us, two values, and we're going to pick up the pace, two values, and then that limiting belief and why you no longer have it. Um, learning more of me and loving the process. That's important to me now because I, I did not like the process. Uh, the process I had to go through, um, it, it, seemed like I, it seemed like my whole life my adult life, everything I had to go for was hard. And I didn't understand the process. Um, I didn't I didn't like it. It it cut too deep. But I okay. didn't realize I didn't realize what was in me needed to come out. Um the big part of the process I didn't like was I I I <laughs> I just got over this. I love being the Brooklyn girl. I love being called the Brooklyn girl. I love being the one that you called and I had, I showed up for whatever if fight it was physically, mentally, whatever, whatever. And I was the Brooklyn girl. But when I heard someone say it recently, it, it, it cringed, I cringed. Mm. As what I realized what Brooklyn was, it's nothing wrong with Brooklyn. I love Brooklyn. I was born, raised and bred, but my mom will always say just because you're in the environment that's not who you are mm -hmm. and so I like dived into that and I lost who I was wow um I, I made the persona of me and the, me being a Brooklyn girl and that's not who I was I'm not the turn up queen I'm not that and now I'm learning I love the process now that I'm in Wow. I think you covered it all. I think you covered it all in absolutely everything that you were saying. Now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? I think your values tell us that. Anybody believes that and want to give her the queen's wave, that you are more than the turn up girl? First of all, you're not a little girl. 
Come on here. That full part. grown, full yeah. grown woman, full <laughs> grown, all yeah. grown. Okay. <laughs> and that's something that I want to encourage you. Welcome, Akia Canada, international singer, psalmist, writer. I'm so glad she's here. Sapria, you want her on your channel, honey. You want her on your channel. I'm so glad she's able to be here. Um, listen, when people lock you in, Take the key out of your pocket, unlock the lock and walk out right here. You don't have to say a word. See, sometimes we do too much of this, trying to convince ourselves that what we say we are, that we want other people to believe it. The words are wasted. It's better to be it. Come on, the words are wasted. It's better to be it. Let's go all the way to Michigan and Lansing with Ms. Hazel Moyo. Tell us your two values. That was awesome, Sister, Sister Jackie. Awesome. Two values and one limiting belief. Now that you know you are worthy, how have you grown? Thank you, Ms. Anita. Um, so my two values the top two right now at this point in my life is charity and confidence. Because I feel like um, with the charity part, I've always had a passion to help people and especially orphans and vulnerable children. But then I never knew like how to start. I had this big idea of being a millionaire first and then I can give. But now I've been like been blessed to be around people. I've told me that you can start with one person at a time. So I'm working on that, knowing that if I impact one life, that goes a long way. And then the confidence part um, is just being more sure in myself and my voice. So it's going to be more clear when I share the previous limitation that I had. So I'll just share that part because it speaks to the confidence part now. So the limitation that I used to have, um, I always liked being silent and in the shadows, you know, to just survive. And then I, I noticed that I still lived in that survival mode as a yes, say or no, say type of person. And I overexerted myself to earn or feel like I deserved my place um, and position in a particular place, uh, time, environment, or group. So I had to learn to say, no, like you're worth much more as who you are. You don't have to overexert yourself. Just show up and be yourself and everything will just flow from there. That is phenomenal. The confidence to know that you can show up and be yourself. Come on, Akia Canada. It's time for you. you. We missed you the first couple of days. We want you to catch up. This is a powerhouse and I'll tell you what, uh, I'll let her say it. Akia, now that you know you are worthy and we've got history, come on off of mute, sweetheart. Uh, now that you know that you are worthy, how have you grown? I would say, uh, one, thank you all, and thank you, Miss Anita, for allowing me to be here today. I'm so glad to see everybody. I can definitely say I've grown from the standpoint of being okay with allowing people to pour into me, being okay with allowing people to um, give what they've experienced, what they've learned, and pour back into me because sometimes we can always be the resource knowing that God is the source, but people pull on us, they get from us, they glean from us, but we never have those steady, consistent, and I would say those ride or live people to pour back into us, to rebuild us, to push us into the next dimension and into that next level. And I've learned how to be okay with that. I've learned how to be um, comfortable with being a fish out of water in a new place, but knowing that new place is where God wants me to be, but also being able to retain and receive from that new place. I love it. I love it. So you're talking about having an advisor. And we've talked about that years ago. You need an advisor. You need a mentor and an advocate. And your advisor has walked in the shoes that you want to walk in, allowing them to pour into you. And sometimes they're right next door to you. They're right on this panel. But you have to be open, she said, to allow this to take place. 
If you're not open, then you can't receive. My mom used to sing a song, if your hand is closed, how can you receive? If your mind is closed, how can you believe? So an advisor, an advocate, the person that's already done it, they're good at it, and they can open doors for you. Now, what's inside of you comes from God. What you're going to get from God from here is going to come through somebody. And that's the makes the community. And we have to be willing, even as Sapria said, to have that confidence, that resilience that I'm not going to quit. If the wind blows and I have an umbrella, I'll use it as a sail. If it starts raining, I'll use it as an umbrella. If it gets too full, I'll use it as a boat. You keep going. You never quit. And if it just tears, I'll take a shower. Just do what you need to do to keep going. So Akia, what was one of the limiting beliefs that you may have had that you no longer have now other than not allowing people to pour in? Share with us. That limitation would have been a, limit, a mental limitation that the enemy tried to place on me that I was not good enough. And if I tried, I would fail at it because I came from a, a very different background of not being wanted. So I dealt with abandonment, rejection issues. But today, as of 2023, I stand and sit in front of you ladies as Miss I Can't Lose. I can't lose because God has won everything for me. I can't lose because if he's for me, who's against me, it doesn't even matter. I stand in knowing that everything that I place my hands to do that God has given me to do, I cannot lose because if God be for me, who can be against me? And I stand on it. Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, a plan to give you hope, prosper, and a future. So I know with all that, I cannot lose. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love that scripture because what you did is you set the precedent for it. You said, I, in the times past, I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree that the hope that was there for me and the plan that God had for me even existed. And most people take that as a promise, but that's a rebuke. That's saying, I told you I got you. I told you I was going to get it to you. I said all of that, but you were over there with the stinking thinking. So you got to live out those 70 years of stinking thinking, seven weeks of stinking thinking, seven months of stinking thinking until you come to yourself and you are no longer prodigal to your promise. The one I made before you got stuck right? So I love it. Perfect. And trust me when I tell you this young lady, tell them about your book. I'm not letting you get on here and not tell them about your book. Everybody else is talking their stuff. Tell them about your book, dear. Okay. Uh, my book is Single Moms Pray. Single Moms Pray is a interactive prayer journal. God gave me the opportunity to write these specific prayers, dealing in hope, dealing in future, dealing in children, dealing in that aspect of knowing and believing and standing on his words through prayer. Through prayer, we gain the key. Through prayer, we have access. Through prayer, he gives us everything that he has designed for us. So this book is catered towards single women, single moms to be exact. Let me rephrase that, single mothers. Um, it stems for single mothers, it's for single mothers to let them know you can make it, you can take it. And just to let them know that there is a key in prayer that will unlock every Everything that God has destined for your life, for your children, for your spouse, because you will be married. You may be single now, but you plus God is the majority and you shall have that Boaz, that man that's going to be that great thing. He that finds a wife finds a great thing and favor with the Lord. So you are that favor. So I'm just expressing to women to open up that line of relationship through prayer. Oh, wow. She's so fantastic. Let's give her the queen's wave as she comes back. And let's move on. Come on, Pamela G, all the way from Zimbabwe. Tell us a little bit, and then we'll go to, I think, did we have Donna yet? I don't think we had Donna for this one, but we're going to go Pamela, then Donna. And then let me see, Lady Nevaeh, did you come already? All right. And I think we may have gotten everybody. Let's go, Pam. Thank you so much, Anita. Um, my two values, um, the top one is really um, around resilience. Um, I strongly feel that the Lord has given me that 
that drive that says I can, I can, and I will. And I try to apply that in every situation that I face because that kind of fuels my energy to face whatever hurdle that I face um, within my life. The second value that I really value is um, calmness or peace. And mm. I believe that, um, you know, there's something about being peaceful that gives you energy to handle even chaotic situations. And I tend to dwell on um, Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. You know, the one that ends with the line that says, and God will give you the peace that transcends all understanding. How I take it for myself is that he gives me peace inside me that allows me to handle chaotic situations around me. Wow. So people yes. will be astonished that how, how are you so calm when all this is happening around you? It's because that inner peace will be right inside telling me that it's going to be okay. Then one situation, uh, Anita, that I want to just, one limitation that I want to just quickly highlight is that my background, I was born as the last born in my family. And I was born seven years after my brother. Um, and I come from a family of seven. And everybody thought that my brother was the last born. And I came along. So I carried a little title that was like, oops, she was a mistake, you know? So for a long time, my sister made the, the, made the mistake of telling me that, oh, you were a mistake. And that became ingrained in my mind. For a long time, I just used to think I'm an inconvenience. I'm not supposed to be in this world. So anything I do, I shouldn't really, I'm not entitled to it because mm -hmm shouldn't be here. But what I want to say is that I've been able to overcome that. And um, God has taken me to a place where wherever I am, I can open my mouth and say stuff that, you know, God lays on my heart. And I'm able to impact people just by being me, not trying to be anybody else, but just by being the unique me that Jason spoke about. So thank you so much, Anita. Wow. Tell them a little more about the work that you're doing in Zimbabwe with and for women and the type of work that you do to bring people together. Okay. Um, so in Zimbabwe, I run um, um, a special platform that is called Audacious Women, uh, where I bring women together just to empower them uh, with knowledge that has to do with financial empowerment as upskilling them in their businesses. And those that aspire to start businesses, we also give them tools on how they can start their businesses. So it's audacious women. Then I also um, do a lot of work with rural women uh, in rural areas like Goromonzi, where we bring grassroots women, just ordinary women that are trying to make something out of their lives. We help them with ideas business ideas, then we give them tools on how they can go about um, starting their businesses. We also facilitate loans for them through some of the partners we have. And uh, we just help, we just handhold them and help them to get on uh, with business. Then um, the other work I do has to do with marketing and it has to do with uh, media work as well, where um, through those two channels, uh, I'm a marketing specialist and a communication specialist, mm -hmm. I get to be able to tell um, stories uh, that, ad that uh, push women advocacy in Zimbabwe um, through television, through radio, and different media. I also get to host several events across um, the Sadak region, which is Botswana, Zimbabwe, Malawi, as well as Zambia. So there's a lot that I do, but I'm just grateful yes, it is. that the Lord <laughs> has... Uh, has, uh, has been able to give me those opportunities. Thank you, Anita. Oh, absolutely. We will be meeting this week, she and I, uh, because I want to start now. Uh, planning for those of you who want to join us in Zimbabwe when we take the Build It Beyond campaign. We never go in to start something new. 
So like I said yesterday, and I kind of leaned forward and said it, <laughs> that if you are a Lone Ranger, it wouldn't fit here because we are committed to take all of the talent, I call it talent relationship, and we're going to take and discover that so that as we're giving now, we mm -hmm. will be able to go there together to influence, impact, leave an imprint on the women that even Pamela is serving, the women at CTT, they have women's services there. Here's what I'd like you to do first and foremost, because we wanna start at home first today, right now. If you know you have a book, if you know like Alimony uh, Life, you have a blog, if you know that you have events or things of that nature, you are skilled as a tailor, whatever it is, take your second device, go on the Facebook page where you should have shared. And I and it's gonna make everybody is going to see what it is that you do. Akia, take a picture of your book, put it on my page and it's gonna go on everybody's page. We're asking that you do that so that as we do this more often, we let you know when we're going live that as we're talking about our giving campaign for the Africa Project, you will know and your following will know. Here's the difference. We are not taking one dollar, one dime. It's called giver's game. And we want to give. I know that uh, Bernadette is like on fire about this. She's like, Miss Nita, get it together. When are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? And she's saying now, now what we're going to do is you will see that at ibasistersounds.world, that you can go there, click the Africa Project. If you're in the beauty industry, and you can get friends together to donate to beauty products, to um, uh, a deodorant, especially sanitary products for women. Now, when you get the sanitary products, try to find the ones that don't have all them chemicals in it. And if you don't know, ask me. I have a, I have a source for you. But then also things that they would need, toothpaste, toothbrush. You can just click the link, say, I want to sew annually, weekly, monthly, whatever it is. We're going to build houses. I'm setting it aside now, at least 500 this paycheck, 500 next paycheck, whatever I have to do, because I want to build someone a house for uh, somewhere in the, uh, I don't know the name of the homes, I apologize, but they can get a two to three room home with running water between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars that might not sound like a lot to you but it's a big deal to be able to go from one room to the next and not have to go outside in the rain and the tent that was it was under and the hole and the pot now uh, uh, uh. we have a lot and we can do more the reason we're doing it this way first of all because god said do it this way so i'm gonna follow it but here's the thing the moment that we satisfy this need I can take, and I love the way Pamela said it. Pamela, I like the way you put your words together. Tell them how important it is, because you've done this as well, how it influences corporations. When we give first globally to this once one uh, identified charity, tell them how it influences. Um, I just shared with Anita that it's powerful when we're able to demonstrate to the corporates um, the evidence of the work that has been done. Once you've just, once you've actually embarked on projects and you've got the proof that you are actually doing something tangible and that is worthy, that becomes your testament when you're talking to the corporates. When they can see the proof, they are willing to invest. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Now here's the advantage. Here's the advantage. That's why I'm telling everybody, there are times that you need to give. That's why I'm asking you. I am begging you, please put your book on my page. I'm begging you, please promote Alimony Life on my page. Please promote your new shirt line on my page, Nevea. Please do this. I need Sister Sounds to be blessed. So I'm opening up an atmosphere where it will support what you're doing. So that then when we do this together and we go to Zimbabwe and we're talking now Airbnbs and luxury stuff that y'all can enjoy, you're not gonna have to worry. We're talking all of that, but then we're gonna take the pretty kitty cloths 
and we're going to roll up our sleeves. We're going to go out there and we're going to serve those women. We're going to give up our gifts. If you're a hairstylist and you literally know you have something because people are taking cosmetology there and you can literally go in and show some technique. You may be a person that's into real estate. Well, you're the one that I would really like for you to take the time, look on the site, and help build the homes. If you're the person that loves students and you're an educator, then there's two ways we'd like to see you give. Now, I'm not gonna limit anybody from giving, but we're doing it strategically. We want educators to help pay the salary of educators. Those educators make $150 a month for their whole family. Hey, y'all know that ain't enough? So I'm saying if we take it to 400, can you imagine, Hazel Moyo, please come on so they will know how that would influence to go from 150 a month to 400 a month. But I need y'all to put y'all stuff on my page because I need to open up this atmosphere for blessing. I need you to take advantage of it today. Come on, Miss Hazel um, Moyo. Thank you, Miss Anita. So when we did the research and it's still ongoing because uh, we, we're trying to make sure that it's improved and we meet all their needs. So when we looked up at when we looked at everything, we found out Miss Anita and I am the CEO and other people on the ground from CTT. If they get an increase to 400, they can manage like to sustain themselves, their households, and also be able to go to school every day. But right now, as is, they have to commute to CTT because most of them, they don't live over there. So that will help them. And also, like Miss Anita said um, in the other session earlier, when she went there, the women were teaching in winter clothes. So also for them to be able to afford professional attire. And um, I think just basic needs and food. Right now, inflation in Zimbabwe is really high. So 150 honestly doesn't do much. So 400 will go a long way. They'll have basic needs such as food, they'll have proper like clothing, professional attire to go to school in, and also just for their motivation. And that will also help us attract more teachers, qualified teachers over there because CTT, then they've now been registered as a formal school. So they're growing and 400 covers everything for now. Absolutely, $400 attracts even more qualified teachers. They're building a school. Can you kind of see how we're working this? N no compulsion. No, you got to do this. We're not showing you pictures of stuff so that you I don't want sympathy money. There's no blessing in it. That's why I freely say today, please, as you're on this on this page, you're doing the IBH a day worthy. You are worthy to be on that page. It may not seem like a lot, but I understand prophetically what's happening. You're, I'm saying I'm opening up the airways on my virtual page because I need it opened up virtually, globally, so we can target this one uh, orphanage and women's services that when we go, it will be already done. Can you imagine standing with the women in summer wear because you decided, hey, you know what? I don't need this, 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 and this. And it's not, it's not, it's not that it's not any good. It's not outdated, but I'm willing to give this because we're going to get together with uh, Hazel and Pam and find out what local one place you can send it in the United States so we can send it as one unit to the women there. Now, they have to travel to get to the school. The children walk, all right? But when I tell you there's a building project that next phase, I'm aiming very big, extremely big. But right now, teacher salaries, generators. We need burners because they're using wood to cook the food and it gives upper respiratory damage. Go to www.ibhsistersounds.world. Africa Project is the icon and you'll be able to click right on there and give as you desire weekly, monthly, annually. We're asking for annual to two-year giving. Do it like you know you need to do it. You will get a 501c3 receipt. Call your friends, call your groups, call your neighbors, and please call your enemies. Bless them with the opportunity 
to give. They're not expecting your call. They will receive your call and they will be changed. Now you can give me the queen's wave or not, but I'm declaring even your enemies will give because they understand enough has happened where we have got to do more than what we're doing. And when we do, I will walk into any corporation. I ain't scared. I will walk into any corporation and say, this is what we need for domestic coaching retreats for educators right here because they are in a terror zone, a war zone right in the United States that the politicians do what they're doing. The people that are just doing what they're doing with NRA, I don't like it, but let them do what they're called to do. This is what I'm called to do. I hope you are too. And we're gonna have coaching retreats for our teachers right here in the United States where they believe what we believe that our God reigns, pour into them, let them be refreshed and send them back out. I know that you can do this. I know we can do it. Now, who did, where's Donna? Did she leave? Did Donna go? She must have had to go. She's at work. All righty. I want to go around the room. Thank you so much. If you will, when you go on my page, there is a QR code. Please scan it. Please accept my gift of the um, Build It Beyond magazine. It will empower you just a little bit. It'll show you what we're doing in Zimbabwe. It'll also give you the connection that you need. Sapria, all the way. Now tell us where you're from again, my love. Thank you so much. <laughs> tell us Hello. where you're from. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Sapria, what 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 uh, what country are you from? I am from India and I'm residing in Chennai currently. Ah, okay, very good, very good. We are so happy to have had you. And tell them a little bit about your program as everyone is getting ready. We're getting ready to uh, dismiss, but tell them about your program. Well, my programs are simple and diversified according to the client's needs. Basically, the thing is, you have to be communicative in your program, whether you're a teacher, mentor, coach, or an entrepreneur. But if you lack people to communicate, to connect, and to understand diversified groups, then you cannot make anything. So my programs include highly effective communication, voice and accent, campus to corporate, and of course, be the best version of yourself how to present yourself in the BILT attitude, and of course, your online and offline presentations. So that's the yes. simple fact that you can say, <laughs> and, and we move on. Thank you so much. Regina Higher Math, thank you so much. We celebrate alimony in life, and I definitely want you to share real quick a little bit about alimony in life so that they will know how to reach you as well. Okay. Um... Alimonia Life is a divorce blog that I started uh, once I started to go through the divorce process. It's alimony, but N-I-A, life.com. Uh, shortly after I started Alimonia Life, uh, about a year and a half into it, I started a private group that is walled off on a network called Mighty Networks. So we have conversations in there. Um, I write, I have three other writers that write on the divorce subjects. Um, I post uh, informational videos that deal with emotions and the things that we deal with. I post uplifting songs. Uh, for mon every Monday, the uh, divorce blog comes out and four days a week, Tuesday through Friday, I write the morning motivations. So it's just a wonderful thing that came out of a need that I have for myself. And in helping other people, I have grown through this process as well. And this year I dedicated myself to speaking for the cause. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Excellent. And I'm excited about being here. Thank you, Anita, for this opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Is there anyone else that would like to have something to say before we uh, dismiss? We certainly want to thank you, Amelia. Uh, for joining us. And I see that we have someone who's listening in. We certainly welcome you and thank you for joining us. We will do day four uh, tomorrow. Yes, Amelia, thank you. Did you want to say something, my dear? 
not really. I was just acknowledging your thanks. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed oh, it. Thank you. We're happy to have you here. Absolutely. Pam, did you have something more you wanted to say? Just to say thank you so much. Uh, it's just been awesome, awesome. Just soaking in and taking in the notes and implementing. Thank you, Anita. Wonderful. And then I have just one more, guys, and we're going to go. I have to, because this is very dear to my heart. I'm asking Deidre to come online and share a little bit about, um, and you guys want to hear this. I know you got to go, but you do want to hear from her with Young Blood Industries, because the industry, uh, financial industry, a lot of things are going on. You're going to be glad to know about this. Deidre? Okay. Um... With, I'm with the Young Blood Industries, um, and our website is youngbloodindustries.com, and it is a minerals extraction company. Um, so we represent uh, small-scale miners, small-scale farmers, and we've created uh, what is called the hybrid currency system. It is the first time for it being done. Um, we have YGB hybrid currency. And what it does is it, we start in with the small scale miners and the small scale farmers. It is 40.5 million small scale miners worldwide and 500 million small scale farmers. So we're starting there with uplifting them as uh, Anita talked about earlier um, and Pamela, uh, the same on the continent of Africa, on the continent of South America, and all these places where these people reside and the people that are attached to them, up to nine different people is attached to each one of those people. So if we can uplift them and the people that are attached to them, it will make a difference in the communities in which they live. So if their pay can be high, then it will uplift their situation in their living as well as those people who are attached to them and it will go out into the community so go to our website and if anytime you have any questions about anything that you see or you read please make sure that you reach out to myself anita anita knows how to contact me or dr youngblood or anyone on our team um, is giving you the opportunity to actually have assets through physical means minerals um, like gold silver platinum things that our people typically do not have the access to mm -hmm. or are able to have the ability to be in on something like this so you can have assets and build um wealth for your families generations yes. to come so that's what we're offering yeah asset wealth uh the dollar isn't worth very much but one thing that is for sure, many companies are transferring uh, the, the, their, their value of different investments to gold, silver, minerals, and things of that nature. Learning more about it will benefit you. Don't rush, but just run and learn, all right? Listen, thank you again, everybody. You have been phenomenal. I also apologize to some of you. I was sleepy last night, and I was sending certificates that were all just the I tell you what, the typing was terrible, but I got it right. And so I want to thank you for allowing me to be human. <laughs> and I thank you for receiving that gift. I appreciate you so much. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Please invite some more ladies to join us. We've got some great people coming on for the remainder of the week. And I will say this to you, continue to live according to the rhythm of God's grace towards you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.